What's up, y'all? <clears throat> Flash speaks back, man. Um, Sixers beat the uh, Miami Heat without uh, Joel Embiid and without James Harden. Uh, they sit and um, Miami Heat coming here with the best record in the East. Team that a lot of Sixers fans are concerned with, um, though I never was really a guy that's concerned with Miami. I, I never, I never really feared them, man. I mean, I get it. Uh, you know, they they play that that stupid ass zone defense where uh, they they're very aggressive, always going for steals, and kind of similar to to Toronto in that it, you know defense kind of sparks their offense. Uh, but they just happen to have just just a little bit more talent than Toronto. You know, with Jimmy Butler and, and this guy Tyler Hero and Bam Adebayo, but I never feared them because I just see them as a the Sixers is just a horrible matchup. I, I just don't get this idea that you know Bam matches up with Embiid. I've heard this absurdity before, um, and then Jimmy Butler, while you know he is a very very good player in the in the NBA, man, good veteran, uh, KG, uh, smart. You know, he, he's not a guy that I'm going to fear is going to outplay, you know, James Harden. And, and, I, and, I, and I get it. Uh, people are down on Harden right now. I'm not going to lie. That, that last game against Toronto had me worried. It, 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 it did. You know, I'm a little concerned. But I'm going to tell you where I am with Harden, honestly, is a situation where, you know, I have no choice but. To kind of like just have faith in it and go with it. Um, I will never say that it wasn't a good trade. Him over Ben Simmons, I take that all day. Even if it includes Seth Curry and, and, and Drummond, Andre Drummond, who's all of a sudden, you know, all this depth that we had that we lost. Which which is a false, 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 false narrative. You know, you, you watch some of these post games and they're saying, you know, Sixers picked up Harden, which is quote unquote good. However, they lost a lot of depth. No, they didn't. Seth Curry was a starter on the team. What you're essentially doing is taking a backcourt that boasted Seth Curry and Tyrese Maxey and made it a backcourt that boasts James Harden and Tyrese Maxey. That's all you did. Andre Drummond was one of our players off the bench who backed up Joel Embiid. That's not giving up a lot of your bench depth. It's giving up one player. You know, I wish these guys, man, these talking heads would be told that and would have accurate information to base their arguments around. You know, not narratives, man. Anyway, man, uh, the story of this game was Tyrese Maxey, man. Mad Max, Maximilian, Maximus took that fourth quarter over, man, like three minutes down and just did the thing. Was putting them threes up in Tyler Hero's eye. Tyler Hero, you know, nice little underachieving player, but a guy who I think is grossly overrated. You know, some people are going to say he's the best player on Miami. Like, what are you smoking? Why do you think a guy who runs around shooting threes and, uh, listen, I'm not going to hate him, but. Whatever. Max, he put it in his eye twice. Did a, ended it off with a Seth Curry joint. All right. So there's a few things, man, that the Sixers got to take from it. Number one, our bench is good. Our bench is good, man. I don't give a damn about the fact that they didn't score, you know, a whole lot in some of these games. People, there are reasons for these things, man. You shouldn't rush to judgment automatically. You just say they're not good because they didn't score a lot, you know, against Denver. They didn't score a lot here. They didn't score a lot here. There are reasons for things. And I'm glad, you know, Doc Rivers and Sam Cassell and Dave Yeager, for those who don't follow the Sixers, you know, this is their staff. I'm glad the staff isn't like the fans. Fans oftentimes are emotional, roller coaster, riding no knowledge having, or if they do have knowledge, they don't use it. They don't use it. And they're quick to rush to judgment about a team, whether or not they're going to win the title. They lose a game against Toronto. You're talking about, well, they can't win a title. What the hell does a, a random game in Toronto have to do with a title? And this is what this game proved. 
Without the two guys you need to win a title, you beat the Miami Heat, which tells you what? These guys are good. And secondly, that a random game in the NBA during the regular season is not a good measuring stick for determining whether or not you're going to win a title. Right? That's what this, that's what this just showed. Like, people thought when we lost to Toronto, oh, yeah, you can't win the title. But then you turn around without your stars and you beat Miami. What does that mean? Does that mean Miami can't win the title? Which I think they can anyway. Or you? does it mean that without we're better without him beating Harden? Is that what you believe? Stop putting all this crazy, unnecessary amount of stock in regular season games, random regular season games. Stop it. Stop it. What the Sixers are doing right now is working out and ironing all the little creases and crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's and determining what is the best lineup to put out there for the playoffs. And they have 11 or more games to do it. So far, they've put in 12 games to do it. You know, say what you want, man. They only lost three games since they changed, flipped the roster around. With Harden and Millsap. One of the things I think we need to do is find a way to get Shake Milton acclimated. Get him going, man. Get him sparked. Because I'm telling you right now, if we get that Shake Milton that we had last night, that Shake Milton, oh, yeah, the Sixers can, can actually really, really be very, very dangerous and do something. You can get that Shake Milton who scored 20 on very efficient shooting, got to the rim, made some jumpers, took advantage of a mismatch in Tyler Hero. He's the first person to actually put Tyler Hero on skates once. And that was a great strategy. And that's the key to defeating the Miami Heat. You attack Tyler Hero. That was that was that was that was great. You see, what happens with Doc Rivers oftentimes, and this is this is the thing, man is that when he's put in a situation with these types of players who are not the marquee guys, guys who are more apt to listen to everything Doc Rivers says, he's an excellent coach. This this showed us the game when we beat the the, um, the Grizzlies was, was without him beat as well. You see, when the team is playing as a cohesive unit and following the system that is put in place by the coaches. They're not better than they are without Harden and and Embiid, but they're playing better basketball. You got to understand there's a difference between being bad and just playing bad basketball. The Sixers are not a bad team. They do not at all, at all have a bad roster. However, sometimes they play bad basketball, and I hope you understand the difference between that. Like that Denver game, for example. Down the stretch was just bad basketball play. And what has to be worked out right now, the problem is not the starting five. The starting five is fine. It's acclimating the extra pieces off the bench. Who do you put them with? And you see, we make this big um, emphasis on on Harden and Embiid playing together well. And that is important. But also, Harden has to learn how to play well with Shake Milton. He has to learn how to play well. He seems to be okay with um, with with, with uh, Niang, but he has to learn how to play well with Forkan. He has to learn how to play well with the other guys we bring in off the bench. Paul Millsap needs to get more minutes. He does because his defense, his smart, savvy play, lack of turnover causing, all of these things are important. All of these things are important, man. And this is what has to be acknowledged. This is what has to be acknowledged, man. Um, I'm actually of the belief that it may be a good idea to maybe run that second unit with Shake Milton and not have... Uh, James Harden run the whole thing. I think that's what's happening with the second unit. Uh, it, it's not that they're bad. They're not used to playing with James Harden. There's a difference. Furkan Korkmaz gives you 18 points yesterday. 
If a guy gives you 18, that means he could potentially at least give you 10 every night. Shake Milton gave you 20. All I need is 12. You understand? And occasionally give me a 20, give me an 18-point game. And he's capable of that. So Doc has to put together units that play together well. You may not have enough time to get Harden playing well with Furkan and playing well with Shake. So sometimes maybe you go with a traditional second unit, one that we were using that worked well for us earlier in the season before Harden got here. That may have to be the second unit. Put those guys with Tobias. Maybe put them with Maxi. You see what I mean? This is what, these are the things that got to work out. But this idea that the bench just sucks. Y'all motherfuckers got to start being smarter, man. You got to start being smarter. That's not, it's not that simple. You just beat the Miami Heat before you beat the Grizzlies. This bench is not bad. This bench is not bad, man. Just because, you know, uh, Stephen A. Smith or, or Jay Williams says they're bad, it doesn't mean they're bad, man. All right? So Mad Max went off. Um, Harden got to learn how to play better with the other, uh, with the other players. And really, but honestly, it's not Harden has to play, learn how to play better with them. No, 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 no. It's not that they need to learn how to play with Harden. Harden needs to learn how to play with them because we had a successful team prior to him coming. He just learns how he's to learn how to slide in. Sometimes, man, just play point guard because when his three is off, he's out there searching for that three. He just keeps trying and he's missing because he's off and then that kills us. Like, that's what happened in the game, in the Toronto game. Harden killed us. All right. Um, but good win, man, for the boys, man. Good win. Good win, man. Look at Maxi, man. Look at that. Set up Tobias and Tobias, you know, he didn't have the best game, but that's okay, man. I'm not worried about that. Do what's in the best interest of the team to win. The 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 the, the matchup was against Tyler Hero. Now what we gotta do is when we have Embiid in there and you have Harden in there, they have to play that same type of ball, attack the matchup weaknesses on the on the, on the the opposing team. And the matchup weakness can't always be Embiid. Sometimes it's whoever Maxie's on, sometimes it's who's, who's Harden's on. Because oftentimes with your marquee players, the, a team is going to put their best defender on Embiid or double him, or they're going to put their best defender on Harden, you see. That's what was happening in the Toronto game. They're throwing the ball Barnes on Harden. So sometimes... The mismatch will be Tobias's guy or Maxie's guy. And we have to play that style of basketball to really ultimately win, man. It's not going to be about Harden and B just doing their thing, man. All right? So, good win for the boys, man. I think we got uh, one coming up in a couple of days, man. I'll get back with y'all then, man. Peace.